Come on up here, Patrick, and pose some questions worth contemplating. I'm going to try. for this tall guy right there. Uh, so uh, I'm a little bit under the weather too, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about three questions that can, you know, that I use personally, um, and I think others can use too, to, to kind of lead a more intentional life. I think, you know, one of the problems with kind of, you know, simplicity and mindfulness uh, and, and these terms, we talk about them to say the outside world <laughs> that you know has you know it paints a specific picture, but it doesn't really capture what the real goal is. And the real goal is really to just be intentional about those things that we allow in and those things that we allow out. That we want to make sure that that uh, if it's around, it's because we want it there, because we need it there. Um, and because it serves, it, it serves a purpose, um, and that we know what that purpose is. And so, to try to keep myself focused on that, I've come up with these three questions that really kind of encapsulate it. So I'm going to go through them. I know we're kind of running a little bit behind. Yeah, I'm going to go through it a little bit quick here. Um, so, question number one, and and this is. Um, Something I use to decide whether or not I dismiss, dismiss something completely like out of hand, like right off the bat, like, you know, shiny new gadget comes out, you know, Apple Watch and, uh, you know, uh, all these things. It's, it's first thing I'm like, okay, what problem does this solve? Um, because really, especially when it comes to, uh, to devices and products and physical things, um, there really are two types of problems that we have. Number one, problems that we know we have, you know? I have this problem, the, this thing I can't do, this thing I would like to do, but I don't have a tool to do it with. Here's this tool, now, terrific, wow, you know, that's what I need. Then there is the problems we didn't know we had until the solution comes along and presents itself, right? You know, uh, I, th I think actually, you know, the iPhone is a great example of this and, you know, the Android after it, right? You know, no one had any clue that a phone didn't need to have buttons. Like, this is just like, you know, obviously it needs to have buttons, but the moment that a phone came along that didn't have any physical buttons on it, you saw it in action, it was like, Oh, of course, of course. This is the way that it should have always worked, right? Um, that's just one example. But I think that, you know, whatever you allow into your life, make sure that you have a clear answer to that question first. What problem is this solving? And what's great is that this is more than just stuff. What, what problem does this relationship that I am entering into solve for me? You know, what problem does this emotion that I am feeling solve? Is anger solving this problem? Or will action solve this problem, right? So you can actually use this question for more than just stuff. Um, and that's the beauty of it. All right, question number two. How little can I get away with? I think you know. I think a lot of us in the, in, the, uh, in, in America we're taught you know. Oh yeah, you got it. how much can you get away with? No, I always think about how little I can get get away with. What's the least amount of of something that I need to accomplish the goal? You know, do I really need um, a you know sledgehammer? to pound a penny nail, right? You know, uh, that there's a balance there, right? You know, or do I need a butter knife to screw in a, to screw in a, a straight head uh, screw, which I have done before. Um, you know, that's not enough of a tool. I really should use a, a screwdriver. It's better suited for the task. I'm not gonna bend up a butter knife that is better suited for spreading butter. 
Um, but the bottom line is, is that you want to figure out when approaching anything, what's the least amount that you need to get something accomplished? Um, and I think more often than not, you'll find you, you don't need a whole lot. You know, when I leave the house or, oh, when I travel, gosh, I hate, there's nothing I hate worse than overpacking. I just loathe overpacking. Um, and so I've worked very long and hard to figure out what's the least amount I need to take for any trip. I don't care what the trip is. It be it two weeks or overnight, what's the least amount I can get away with packing? And uh, actually, uh, I can pack for any indeterminate <coughs> amount of time uh, in a bag about the size of your standard backpack. Um, because <clears throat> there's really only two types of clothing I ever really need, and that's the one I'm wearing on the plane, and the one that's in the bag that I'm going to wear tomorrow while the one that I wore on the plane gets washed and is drying in my room for the next day's wear. I could just recycle that, those two outfits, you know, and maybe I want some options, I'll throw in a couple more pieces, but regardless, the goal is always, how little can I get away with taking? Not how much, right? Um, so, I find that one really helpful with a lot of things, you know? How little can I get away with needing to live in my life? How little, how little, how little time can I get away with taking for um, something that shouldn't have to take a lot of time? Um, you know, time being the most valuable resource we have, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with attention too. Not gonna argue that, but let's just say that uh, unlike attention, uh, time is the only universal truth. It is the only thing that we share with everything else in the universe. Everything else in the universe is tied to time. Everything that lives, everything that exists, will die. And so for me, if I can save any amount of time, I'm a rich man. Um, and, you know, you'd be amazed at how little it takes to really kind of get to a meaningful life. Number three. Oh, this one's, this one's key. This one's so big. Where does this belong? So, my wife is the exact opposite of a minimalist. <laughs> she, she, uh... Uh, my, my favorite joke about her is the quickest way to drive her crazy is to stick her in a round room and tell her there's something free in the corner. <laughs> I can guarantee you she'll find it and it will end up in our house somewhere. Um, but when she does show up with the thing that she rescued off the curb uh, in the trunk of her car, it's one of the first questions I ask her. Okay. Where does this belong? When I take this out, because you know, you know I'm gonna be the one who's taking it out. <laughs> where does this belong? Where do I put it? What problem does it solve? Let's just say that <clears throat> a lot of things have ended up not in our house just because I asked those two simple questions and she couldn't come up with an answer. And by her own admission, she was like, it was free. <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, for some things she brings, it, the answer is obvious, right? Um, our little girl's been taking piano lessons. She found someone who is selling a $50 upright piano. Found another place that will move it for 50 bucks. So. 100 bucks so my daughter has a piano to practice on in between her lessons. Where does it belong? Well, let's get rid of this chest that just really just sits in the corner and holds uh, wrapping paper. That doesn't need to be there. We can put that in the basement. We don't need to <coughs> access wrapping paper every day, but my daughter needs to practice every day. Perfect, that goes. Yeah, piano fits there. Great, it has a place as a place to belong. Um, and this works well with your, with your task list. Um, it makes it more powerful. Um, you know, ask yourself for every task on your list. What, what problem am I solving by doing this? 
What purpose is this serving? Where does this belong? This goes to the goals and the, and, and the relationships. And one of the reasons it's so important to understand your roles and your goals, in my mind, is it provides an answer to that essential question when it comes to the things that you do. It says, this is the problem it's solving. This is where this belongs. Um, and if you want to get your email under control, as Mike Vardy was talking about, as you go through that list, ask yourself, are you looking at your inbox, where does that email belong? Does it belong in my inbox or does it belong in the trash? Does it belong in my junk mail board? Does it belong in some archive? Where does it belong? Um, but this question becomes really powerful once again when applied to everything. Where does Twitter belong in your life? What problem does it solve? Facebook. What problem is Facebook solving? Where does it belong? And I think that once you start to approach your life with these three questions in mind, start to apply them to the things that come in and the things that go out, I think you'll find that the life you end up leading is one led with intention and not by default. <coughs> Simple as that. You can get on the